Erev Tov Rabotai, we are continuing with our Mishnah Yomi, Masechet Baba Metzia. We are up to Perik Zayn Mishnah Yud. Today's Mishnah Yud should be Le'enun Nishmad, Neria Ben Svetlana, Ranbai, Vidyao Ben Burcha Yisraelov, Chana Ben Miriam, Sasson Ben Rayan, Yoshua Ben Shifra, Menuchatam Ben Eden, Amen. In Abdi Ben Chaim, the Chaim, the Rifua Shelema, of Daniel Shalom Ben Rosa, Batok Shachol Yisrael, and the Chlama Mera Ben Amin, Ot Zion Chai Ben Dvora. The Mishnah continues defining when the loss of an animal is unavoidable and when the loss is not unavoidable. Meta chidarka hareza ones if it dies of natural causes, this is an unavoidable accident. Sigifa va meta eno ones, but if he afflicted it, for example, he starved it or exposed it to severe heat or cold and later it died, this is not an unavoidable accident. Not only is such behavior avoidable, but it is negligent. Therefore, even an unpaid shemel would have to pay in this circumstance. The shepherd is held responsible even if the animal did not die right away because its abuse might have caused an internal injury that eventually led to its death. If it went up to the tops of steep mountains on its own against the will of the shomer, the shepherd tried to stop the animal but it overpowered him and fell to its death. This is an unavoidable accident. But if he brought it up, to the tops of steep mountains, and it fell and died. Eno ones, this is not an unavoidable accident. In fact, it is negligence. Even if the shepherd did not take the animal up the mountain, but he could have prevented it from doing so, he is liable. This, is, this however, is not negligence. So only a paid shomel would have to pay, while an unpaid shomel would be exempt. The Mishnah teaches a method to which shomrim can exclude themselves from their normal obligations. Madnes shomel chinam liot patur mishvua. An unpaid shemel can make a condition that he will be exempt from swearing in a case where he would normally have to swear. When the shemel accepts the item, he can say to the owner that he agrees to watch it only on condition that if it is lost or stolen, he does not have to swear in order to exempt himself from payment. Generally, an unpaid shemel who claims that the item was lost or stolen without negligence on his part does not have to pay provided that he swears his claim is true. This Mishnah teaches that he can exempt himself from having to swear. He can even stipulate that he is exempt from payment if he was negligent. The Mishnah does not mention this case because it is unusual for an owner to entrust his property to a Shomel who will not pay for negligence. Our Mishnah seems to contradict the general rule stated in the next Mishnah that one cannot make a condition that goes against the Torah. And a borrower who must pay for all types of loss can make a condition that he will be exempt from paying. And a paid shomer and a renter can make a condition that they will be exempt from swearing in cases of unavoidable loss where they would normally be required to swear and from paying in cases of theft and loss where they would normally be obligated to pay. And that is in a Mishnah Yud. Now, now that we learned that a shomer may make a condition to exempt himself from his normal responsibilities, Mishnah Yud Alab teaches some laws about conditions in general. Most legal acts can be made to depend on the fulfillment of a condition. The legal act takes effect only if the condition is fulfilled. However, a condition is valid only if it meets certain guidelines. If an act is made to depend on an invalid condition, it is as if the act was performed without any condition, and therefore the act takes effect regardless of whether the condition is fulfilled. For example, a man betrothes a woman on condition she give him a sum of money. If the condition is valid, she is betrothed only if she gives him the money. If the condition is not valid, for example, it does not meet the guidelines for a proper condition, like the Mishnah will explain, she is betrothed regardless of whether she gives him the money or not. The Mishnah gives some guidelines about which conditions are valid and which are not valid. If anyone makes a condition that goes against something written in the Torah, Tina'ob Batel's condition is not valid. For example, a man betrothes a woman on condition that he does not have to engage in marital relations. Now just to point out, this is not a contradiction to the law taught in the previous Mishnah, that a Shomer may make a condition that he be exempt from the obligations the Torah sets for a Shomer. In that case, the condition does not go against the Torah's laws, because the Torah does not require a person to accept the responsibilities and obligations of a Shomer. The Torah simply says that when a person agrees to become one of the four Shomrim, he is subject to a specific set of laws. This person is saying that he is not willing to become one of the Shomrim described in the Torah, Instead, he agrees to guard the object under a different set of terms, which he now arranges with the owner of the object. 
This is how the Rav explains it in Mishnah Yud, and this is how the Ramban explains it. Now, again, back to our example, if a man betrothes a woman on condition that he does not have to engage in marital relations with her, that is not a valid condition. Since the Torah obligates a husband to provide his wife with marital relations, this condition is not valid. We know that the Torah in the book of Shemot, chapter 21, verse 10 in the Gemara Ketubot, page 48a, obligates a husband to provide his wife with marital conditions, and therefore, this, uh, I'm sorry, the Torah obligates husband to provide his wife with marital relations. Therefore, this condition is not valid. Since the condition is not valid, the legal act that depended on the condition takes effect, but the condition does not have to be fulfilled. Therefore, the betrothal is valid and the husband is required to engage in marital relations. Now, there is a dispute among Tanaim whether this law applies even to conditions that involve only money. For example, if a man betrothes a woman on the condition that he will not provide her with food, the condition is valid according to the Biuda, even though it goes against the Torah, which obligates a husband to provide his wife with food, as says in Shemot chapter 21, verse 10. Since the obligation to feed one's wife is purely a monetary manner, matter, the wife can give up her right to receive food because the person can waive any monetary right. Therefore, if she agrees to the condition, it is valid. The Bimeir, whoever disagrees, he maintains that any condition against the Torah's laws is invalid, even if it involves only money, as the Gemara says on page 94a in Mesechet Bab Metzia. In addition, a condition must be worded in a specific manner. Any condition in which the person states the action being done before stating the condition it depends on, Tenel Batel is not a valid condition. For example, if a person gives someone a gift and says, I give you this gift on condition that you walk a mile, the condition is invalid, because he mentioned the action he is doing, I give you this gift, before the condition, on condition that you walk a mile. Since the condition is not valid, the gift belongs to the recipient, even if he does not fulfill the condition. For the condition to be valid, he would have to say, if you walk a mile, I will give you this gift. This law is learned from the condition made by Moshe with the tribes of God and Reuven. Before the Jews entered Eretz Israel, they conquered the land of Gilad, which is east of the Jordan River. The tribes of Gad and Reuven wanted to settle on that land rather than in Eretz Israel. Moshe agreed to this on condition that the men of those tribes joined the rest of the Jews in their battles to conquer Eretz Israel. This is the book of Bamidbao, chapter 32. The law is that no condition is valid unless it is similar to a condition made by Moshe. Since Moshe stated the condition before he stated the action in the book of Bamidbao, chapter 32, verse 29, all conditions must be worded the same way in order to be valid. Other guidelines for conditions are also inferred from Moshe's condition. That's discussed in Kiddushin chapter 3, Mishnah 4. The Mishnah states what kind of condition is valid. Any condition that is possible to eventually fulfill. And the one making the condition stated the condition at the beginning before stating the action. It is a valid condition. However, if a condition is impossible to fulfill or if the action was stated first, it is not valid. For example, if a man gave his wife a get, a bill of divorce and said, if you fly up to the sky, you will be divorced. The divorce takes effect even though she obviously cannot fly. As the Gemara says on page 94 in Masechet Bamitziya, such a condition is not valid because we assume that it was not meant seriously but was simply said to annoy the other person. And that is an abotai of today's Mishnah Yomi. The Rav does tell us from earlier on in the Mishnah that al does not follow the opinion of Rabbi Meir who said that any condition against the Torah's laws is invalid even if it involves only money. Rather, the al follows the opinion of Rabbi Yehuda that a person can make a condition that involves only Money and the condition is valid, and that is an about to have today's Mishnah Yomi. Baruch Adonai Leolam. Amen. Va Amen.